Humans are the most dangerous animals on earth these days. We are ruthless, nasty, violent, hairless monkeys always looking for a way to leverage our surroundings. I'm thoroughly convinced that we will remain atop the food chain until somebody blows us up, accidentally or otherwise. It wasn't always this way though. Way back before the invention of automatic firearms and steam powered machinery, we had a lot more predators to worry about. At that point, you would have to worry about a bear stumbling through and tearing your whole family into, or a poisonous snake slithering along and injecting you with enough venom to send your brain to a higher plane. But even further back, before humans were even a twinkle in the eye of some ancient primate, there were some gigantic, terrifying creatures. As the earth turned and climates changed, these behemoths thrived waned and then died out. I'm not one to dance upon the grave of an extinct species, especially nowadays when we're the cause of a lot of extinctions, but boy oh boy am I glad that some of these beasts aren't around today. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we'll be counting down the top 5 ancient creatures we're glad are extinct, part 2. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more insane creatures. Let's get going. Coming in at number 5, Mega Piranha. I am a piranha. They are from the Amazon. <laughs> Yes, it's possible that I watched Finding Nemo a few too many times as a kid. And somehow I think Darla still might be scarier than the bony terror fish I'm about to introduce. Something about that headgear still sends shivers down my spine. Back to the mega piranha though. This ancient carnivorous fish is basically a piranha, but mega. They are estimated to have been about a meter long and weighed over 73 kilograms. Although some say that they could have been as heavy as 484 kilos. Crazy. Gigantic aquatic creatures are creepy enough, but that is not the scariest part by a mile. A regular piranha one might find today has a jaw that can generate around 72 pounds of force, which is pretty insane for a little fish, right? Well, the mega piranha might have been able to chop down with over 1,068 pounds of force. If anything ever generates 1,068 pounds of force anywhere in my body, I just, I want to be put down. Just end me. Pound for pound, this bite force is greater than that of megalodons, alligators, and even the mighty T-Rex. And it's not like the mega piranha is just going to gum you. No. It has teeth. Serrated chompers with stout circular roots arranged in a zigzag pattern across its front jaw that are sharp enough to slice flesh and sturdy enough to crush turtle shells and bones. Yes, this fish will crush your bones. Be thankful you can hop in the water today without worrying about these meat manglers. Coming in at number 4, we've got Quetzal Coatless. Pterodactyls are pretty crazy, right? Giant lizard birds with insane beaks and all? Well, the Quetzalcoatlus puts those winged freaks to shame. With a stork neck, back wings, and four limbs, this is the largest creature to ever fly. If it was standing on the ground, this boy would be as tall as a giraffe. And with its wings outstretched, it's been estimated at having a span of 35 feet. It's basically the size of a Cessna aircraft. I'd be really down to pilot a giant winged thing. Although, if I was flying one of these guys, I'd probably, you know, fall to my death from 10,000 feet. But hey. There are a few hypotheses on how these flyers fed, and some say they skimmed the water for fish, while others claim they scavenged and fed on small terrestrial animals. I like the idea of a gigantic lizard bird snatching up a baby dino and flying away with it. If they were alive today, you can bet they'd be snacking on family dogs and cats left out in backyards. Maybe even the kids playing on the little play structure. Not the nicest thing to think about, but these humongous beings were superbly adapted to long range extended flight and could fly at speeds of up to 130 kilometers per hour for 7 to 10 days at altitudes of 4600 meters. They could do cross continental trips like it was nothing. This was made possible thanks to thermal gliding, where it would use rising columns of warm air and glide along for ages. I can only imagine the chaos that would ensue if they were gliding around today, you know, crashing into small aircraft, getting sucked into turbines and taking down planes. Oh boy. Filling out our number three spot, we've got Arthropleura. What is 8 feet long, has enough legs to make you squirm, and crawls along the floor, terrifying anyone who discovers it? Nope, not the human centipede, Arthropleura. This is the largest known land invertebrate of all time. 
This gigantic creepy crawly lived during the Carboniferous era and grew to be so large, probably due to the greater partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere. That and the fact that there were no predators around to eat it. Although, even if there were predators, could you imagine trying to eat an 8 foot millipede? It'd be like crunchy and leggy and gooey. No. These monstrous bugs had hundreds of legs that undulated in rhythm, allowing it to maneuver quickly along the forest floor, swerving around obstacles. They were likely herbivores, feasting on decomposing plant matter on the ground, which admittedly is less terrifying than a carnivorous millipede, but I can just imagine seeing one of these things scuttling around, looking like a giant moving rug with a hard shell. These leggy fellas went extinct at the end of the Carboniferous period as the climate dried out and rainforests grew smaller. They live on today as much smaller, much less horrible regular millipedes. Stomping in at number 2 we've got the Spinosaurus. Honestly I would not mind if this one was around today, it's just it's so freaking cool. I deal with all the death and destruction. This 60 foot carnivorous lizard is actually the largest of all known carnivorous dinosaurs. Bigger than even the T-Rex and Gigantosaurus. Yes, bigger than the Gigantosaurus. They got the names wrong, folks. Although, for this one in particular, they got the name right. This spine lizard, or Spinosaurus, had seven foot spines growing out of its back, creating a sail like shape or possibly a hump. They're not really sure. It'd be like having a bunch of basketball players sprout from your back. It is thought that these were used to make itself either look bigger, or used for heat regulation, or to attract mates, or all the above. The Spinosaurus was semi aquatic, meaning that nobody's safe on land or water. No escape. However, it probably spent a lot of time in the water and ate lots of fish. It had short hind limbs like early whales, dense compact bones like penguins, wide flat feet for paddling, and an alligator like snout for catching fish. An apex predator in the water for sure. But don't feel like you'd be safer on land because this sucker could have hit speeds up to 25 kilometers per hour. So unless you're whipping the Corolla, this guy's catching up to you. Originally discovered in western Egypt, the Spinosaurus likely lived around 100 million years ago and might have actually been the first dinosaur to take to the water. So if you need any more reasons as to why it would absolutely suck to deal with one today, go ahead and watch Jurassic Park 3. This lad takes over as the main antagonist and scraps with the T-Rex. Although, you know what? It might be cool to host a dinosaur fight club. Let's place some bets, folks. And finally, number one, Titanoboa. That clip was from the wet and wild creature feature from 1997, Anaconda. Yes, we are talking about Titanoboa, but you know, we'll make that link between the two snakes soon enough. If I could imagine one way I would never want to go, it would probably be getting suffocated and crushed to death. And guess how this 42 foot snake kills. Oh no. The Titanoboa or Titanic boa is considered the largest snake going, or at least it was during the Paleocene epoch. No living snake has ever been verified with a length of over 31 and a half feet, and it is highly doubtful that we'll ever see this record broken. They were able to grow so large because way back when, in the South American rainforests, there were much higher temperatures, and this meant that cold blooded killer reptiles could grow to be way bigger. A stealthy killer, the Titanoboa probably hunted similar to crocodiles, lurking right beneath the surface of shallow water. When a poor, unsuspecting animal came to the edge to drink, it would strike. The Titanoboa would then wrap itself around the prey and crush it to death. It would then swallow the prey whole, down the hatch. This thing could down crocodiles like two bite brownies, given that mega slurp action. Although it has a similar appearance to a boa constrictor, its hunting methods more closely resemble an anaconda. I considered making a Nicki Minaj joke here, but I thought better of it. You're welcome. So there you have it. Five fearsome creatures that would kill you in a heartbeat given the opportunity. Thank your lucky stars that you're separated from them by millions of years of progress. What do you think is the scariest extinct creature? Are there any that need to be added to this list? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's have a quick look at some of your more interesting ones from last time. The Bastard Gift says, There is such thing as beautiful monsters. Absolutely. Sometimes the most beautiful can be the most terrifying too, like the final form in Shin Godzilla or Lady Gaga. Homegrown Twinkie says, you think Keegan's wearing a Taylor Swift shirt so people stop asking him where he gets his clothes from? Cause I suddenly don't have a desire to know anymore. 
I mean, it's pretty obvious where the Taylor Swift shirt came from. It came from a Taylor Swift concert. But the origins of the rest of my wardrobe will remain a mystery for now. Also, just wondering, because some people seem to just be looking at Taylor alone, but did anybody notice anything odd about her eyes on my shirt? Let me know. John Pedroza says, I'm going to have nightmares. Good. Enjoy them. Find inspiration in them. Make something from your nightmares. Show us what you got. Amon Geiger says, Not a scary channel, and you are not an horror host. You look more like a Madonna fan club host. Who says I can't be both? Get it together, dude. Red Valkyrie 84 says, Boo! Hey, another ghost. Love to see the undead on the channel. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.